Hello, this is Albert van Dijk, and this video introduces the second lab exercise, a tutorial, uh, and that is all about spatial temporal trend analysis. And um, some concepts that uh, we try to sort of cover in this module is um, change detection, data cubes, what are they and how do we use them, model conceptualization and calibration, we'll have a little bit of that, not too much. Uh, how can I slice and dice and drill through data cubes? How can I plot the data? And how can I do things like temporal trend analysis? Uh, or in these spatial temporal uh, analyses. And so we're going to look at uh, some three dimensional data, and I'll come back to what I mean by that. Um, here's an example of, uh, of how you can display three dimensional data in, uh, in uh, MATLAB. So there's a figure there, uh, as you can see, it's got three axes uh, the, uh, the, the x axis, the y axis, and the vertical axis, and they're all got different units. Um, and um, Data cubes are another type of three-dimensional data, uh, essentially. Uh, sometimes we call them map stacks, uh, and as you can imagine, that basically represents a stack of, of uh, maps uh, and grids. E each map is a grid, uh, and uh, there's a third dimension, which could be time, and it is in this example here, the latitude, longitude, and time. Uh, it could also be some, some, something else. Uh, in this case, we've got a data cube of four uh, uh, four uh, cells in each direction, so four different latitudes, four different longitudes, and four different times. So a bit like a Rubik's cube, except um, four instead of three on the side. Uh, and uh, that's how you can best visualize them, probably. And, that, and visualizing them like that might help you sort of think about how to analyze your uh, your data cube. Now, um, it's quite typical because we're dealing with spatial science that two of the dimensions are are, are spatial dimensions, so often latitude or longitude or uh, northing and, uh, and easting, for instance, or something like that. Um, but the uh, third uh, dimension can be uh, something else. It doesn't have to be uh, the time. In, in fact, in this case, it's the spectral wavelength. So we've got the reflection in different wavelengths. We've got hyperspectral data, uh, and the wavelength or the wave number, in this case, is the, uh, is the third dimension. It can also be the band number. For instance, with uh, MODIS data, you'll get one image uh, or, or one uh, data file per data acquisition date, uh, and then the, it will have the spatial dimensions, but the third dimension will be the band number. It's the same with Landsat data, and that band number corresponds to a, a spectral region, of course. All right, so um, finding your way in the metrics can be a bit tricky because different programming languages have different ways of, uh, of referring to locations in the metrics, uh, and we saw that in a previous uh, a video uh, about MATLAB, you know, some start at zero, MATLAB starts at one, so the first element is always numbered one, uh, and then the dimensions uh, uh, may vary as well. So in this case here, uh, we've got the latitude along here, we've got the longitude along here, and we've got the time along there, and uh, the way MATLAB thinks of that then is uh, the, uh, the first uh, cell here could be uh, uh, is, the, is the latitude one, the, the, uh, the, uh, and if we look for longitude 3, that means we're going to be looking at this row. So we're going to intersect this row with this row. And then the, f the third element is 4. Uh, so along the time domain, we're going to look for uh, this cell here, essentially. Uh, uh, these things are sometimes called voxels. So that's a, a volume type pixel. Uh, it's a contraction of volume and pixel. Uh, whereas a pixel is like uh, typically a cell in a, in a, in a two-dimensional matrix. Um, now that's important because it means you can do some simple operations to get particular data out of this data cube that you want. For instance, you can do a data drill. With a data drill, um, you uh, only look for one cell in two dimensions, uh, and then uh, you want all the cells uh, in that third dimension. Uh, and um, in this case, and quite commonly, that third dimension is time. So maybe for one latitude or longitude, or so one point, let's say, or one, one location in the landscape, I want a time series. And I can write that in MATLAB as this. I say data uh, 1, the latitude 1, longitude 2, and then all the cells, which is indicated by this column here. So that will give me an array back, uh, a, a row of four numbers or a column of four numbers. You can call that data drill or skewer uh, uh, because um, uh, it's a bit like you know, putting a skewer through the, through the um, data cube and then and, and dropping everything else that's not on the skewer, sort of thing. Uh, we can also slice. Um, and that's 
usually a map for a particular time, and we tend to call it a time slice. And so here's an example of that. And here, instead of what we saw before, we say we want all the cells in the latitude domain, all the cells in the longitude domain, uh, and then we want the second uh, time, uh, the second period or the second time step in the uh, temporal domain or temporal dimension. So that's like a time slice. And so in this case, you know, it starts to look more like a map stack again because I get the map for that time. Uh, I could also call it a tile, for instance. Uh, a third possibility is maybe I want a data chunk. So in that case, uh, I, don't, I don't want all the data. Maybe I'm all only interested in Australia. I've got data for the whole world, maybe. I want to cut out Australia, but I want to keep all the time periods, uh, all the time steps. Um, that could be one example where, where I might want to apply that common example. In that case, um, the, uh, the uh, command would look a bit different. Basically, uh, I would have to say, give me the, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, uh, first to the second latitude cells the third to the fourth longitude cells, and all the time cells. We'll see an example of that next. All right, so that was data cubes. Now um, I want to talk a little bit about structure array. So what's a structure array? It's a, a bit like a container, like the lunchbox here, with different compartments in it, where I, where I can keep different types of things. Uh, you can compare it also maybe with different worksheets in an Excel file, or maybe a couple database. Um, so here's a, 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 an example of what, could, what would be a structured array. In MATLAB, uh, I might have patients, so I might have the, uh, maybe six patients or whatever. Patient one has a name, so there's one field, if you like, attribute. Uh, John Doe has got uh, billing, maybe you know, he has to pay $127, I suppose, uh, and he has his test results. And then you can have you know, patient two with all the same fields, and that's what you see here. And so you can add you know, new patients, but you can also add new fields. All right, so that's uh, essentially structured array. Um, you can do the same with uh, matrices. So I might have a red, green, blue image, and I could give them separate names, but I could also uh, create fields within one structure array. So I could say the image has got a red band, and I'm going to put the red reflectance there. So that's this matrix here. It's got a green band. I'm going to put a green matrix here, uh, and a blue band. I'm going to put that there. So that's you know uh, uh, another way of organizing your data, and that's really the point of structured array. So you can you keep your workspace and your mind, I suppose, also organized, less clutter, less to remember, uh, and uh, you can also treat your uh, data more like a database. It can run easier, um, more easily. You can, uh, can you can run um, processes over it. Okay, so now on to the lab today. Uh, so what I'm going to look at in the lab today is change detection to start with. And we're going to map the area that was burned in the 2003 Canberra bushfires. So here's a picture of the, um, of uh, I think Western Creek probably, uh, during the fires in 2003. And um, what we're going to try and do is uh, uh, analyze these two images. So we've got an image of Lancet before the fires, nothing going on there as you can see. And then a, uh, an image after the fires. You can see there's still smoke in the image and you can also see this is a false color composite. Uh, you can see what areas have been burned. They show up red. So we're going to look at that. Uh, we're going to try and map that change. All right. Second exercise we're going to do is we're going to do a trend analysis. And to do that, we're going to use a data set derived from passive microwave remote sensing. That uh, and that that data has been used to estimate global biomass from year to year, from 93 to 2012. And we're going to look at uh, trying to map out regions where there's been an increase or a decrease in biomass over that period. Uh, and we're going to use this equation here to uh, convert uh, uh, vegetation optical depth, which is what we get from the Pesson microwave retrieval model, to above ground biomass, or ABC, uh, using this equation, uh, which is written down here. So we're going to do a little bit of programming to do that. Uh, and uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what the data looks like, is a little animation. Uh, and uh, as you can see, you know, when you when you sort of show it like this, you don't can't really see. That much changing. Sure, things go up and down a bit, but you couldn't really assess the trend. So, what we need is some sort of statistical method uh, to uh, to uh, better map those differences. Now, a simple one, if you want to keep using animation, is to create the, the anomaly maps. And that basically, for any year, gives you the difference of the value. Let's in this case, the biomass for that year minus the average biomass for the whole period. That's called an anomaly, and that's useful. As you can see, you can see areas with uh, in. Uh, uh, Blue and red show up as going from above average uh, uh, to the uh, to below average uh, at the end of this period. 
all right. All right, so that was a brief introduction to the uh, to the lab exercise for today, and uh, I wish you good luck.